would first of all like to introduce a very cool picture of ours from our childhood. This. Actually, from our childhood only, we wanted to go to that much higher level that we could not even resist our shorts to remain at the waist. We could move them up to the chest level. Our main journey started in year 2007, wherein I was mastering Yuvraj as well a bit, the field of street cricket. And uh, luckily, our father admitted us to LB Shastri Cricket Academy, academy from where players like Gautam Gambhir and Amit Mishra used to play. That was really very fantastic. And in 2014, we played our first tournament, and I was the man of the series, whereas Yuvraj really played very, very bad. And uh, yes, that was a very good experience. We were improvising our strokes, our games, and our coach was really encouraging us very much. In 2009, we were selected for a national tournament wherein we would be representing Delhi. I was the all-rounder, wherein Yuvraj was the wicketkeeper only. And <laughs> then again, our coach called my father that he wanted both of us to quit studies and focus on cricket only, so that we could achieve our goal of playing internationally. But being the sons of national level swimmer, our father warned us about various hardships in the sports. He don't. He didn't want to face all those problems that he faced in his life. So simply, we quit cricket. There was one more reason as well, because we were fetching very good marks at the school, and a lot thanks to that serious cramming before the exams. It really helped us a lot. At that time, we were very alone. We were having a lots of free times at our home, so we started watching out shows like Doraemon and Jetsons and different shows on National Geographic and Discovery channels. It was fantastic. We were having many, many doubts that how come these things are possible. And when we used to ask these doubts to our teachers at school, they used to make us stand outside the class for the whole day. As simple as that. So we actually had developed a very bad habit that the, all those anchors and those scientists who were featured on, on these shows we used to connect them via mail or Facebook. And many a times, there were many creepy professors who were not replying us. So Yuvraj came up with an innovation of making fake IDs on Facebook of beautiful girls. <laughs> and it really helped us a lot. Now we were getting very good response. Yes. So uh, now we were getting very good response with some lovely emotions. And that was really a very wonderful experience for us. So in till 2011, we were learning. We learned whole experimenting procedures, scientific principles. At that age, we were reading quantum mechanics and all that stuff. That was wonderful for us. In 2012, we launched the first project that was pumpkin purifier. We were, I mean, purifying water, but just using pumpkin without use of any sort of electricity. That was the first project. We presented that many places nationally, and I was actually, this project was the national winner as well. But at that time, we were not having knowledge of getting the things patented. So simply in 2013, we lost the rights of pumpkin purifier. And it really, it was really very bad for us. That was our first project, and we were not having any sort of argument that's, that we are the owners of this project. Our family really supported us very well at that time, and they wanted us to do more in this research work. With coming up with that spirit, in 2014, we filed three patents on our name. I mean, till that time, we were having seven research papers in just one year, and three patents. So for the patents, when we approached the lawyers, they were, I mean, expecting 1.3 lakhs of patent from 15-year-old kids to pay. It was really very bad. So. We were not having that much finances. So we learned the whole procedure of filing a patent on our own. And we filed an independent patent and reduced the cost of filing a patent from 1.3 lakhs to just 9,000 rupees. That's all. In 2015, we launched three more patents on our name. Until then, it was 14 research projects. In total, now we are having 22 research projects, seven patents on our name. We are the recipients of Karamvir Chakra Award, the youngest invited delegation at the United Nations for Nova Summit. Thank you. Till 2018, we are planning to set up co-working research labs, wherein people like us, the researchers without any degree, can do research work. 
the researchers at any age can do their research work. Can they can get the scientific principles, learn them, and get their mentors there? We are planning to set up that through Zenith Vipers. So there were two persons who were constantly supporting us throughout our journey. I should say these are the lucky parents. <laughs> and uh, yes, they are actually supporting us very much because I mean we are doing all those stuff out of the box. And my father used to take us all those lectures, seminars, wherever he used to. Uh, tell him that I want to attend this one. I would do it at this one. He would take us to that, and I mean, they, these two were really supporting us. And uh, these two are the most beautiful person on earth, according to us. If we talk about the current scenario today, there are a number of young PhD graduates and the postdocs who are leaving science due to uncertain career structures, low salaries, and uh, not permanent positions. So here the question arises. That are we gonna lose these talented scientists before reaching out their potential? There is a person whose name is Dharamveer Kamboj. From being a rickshaw puller in old Delhi, he is running his own plant now, his village, and commercializing his product. In his story, what was that? Dharamveer Kamboj was in his early stages was a rickshaw puller in old Delhi, and unfortunately, rather I, I'll say it as fortunately, he met an accident and he went back to his village. When he was in his village, he, it was two, three years when he was bedridden. Her wife suffered a lot at that time. And when he was well, he refused to come back. The reason was he wanted to do farming in his own village and earn money out of it. When he was doing organic farming, especially in medicinal herbs, he was having a good amount of knowledge with the, which he got his from mother as he used to help them, her during uh, his childhood. So there was a problem which was coming up that there was no single machine which can process all type of medicinal herbs. And the necessity of that person drove to a research and innovation. And he developed a multi-purpose food processing machine. A single machine which was able to process all type of medicinal plants and herbs in a go. So here the twist comes in the story. Earlier, I was saying that you need to have three things, presence of mind, good set of questions, and complete dedication to re research. But let me enlighten you. In the current orthodox system, if you are having three, still you cannot do research. The answer is because of our education system. Rather, I should say our examination system. Students at school cramp for exam. If you go and ask them, what are you, what are you studying? I'm studying for my son. Monday exam. I'm studying for my next UT. There is no one, or I should say, there are very less who are learning at schools. Exams, or rather, I should say, these cramping championships are killing creativity. So at Zenith Vipers, it says there is a sm small room in our school from where we run a small organization and we help students globally from different backgrounds from different classes of different ages to do research. We promote the concept of research without degree. And there, we help them from getting ideas to experimenting things, and also guide them for the patenting processes. In few years, as Yash to already told, we are planning to set up co-working research labs. That will be a place wherein researchers will not be bound to any particular institute. The corporates will be meeting researchers directly. So it will help the researchers to earn more and there will not be any diversion of the dedication among the researchers. By concluding, I'd like to put up some more questions. How the world will look like if the youth everywhere in this world have a tool to succeed? Is there anyone who is having a good knowledge, who is having a good, good idea, having a good research? Are they able to apply them practically? We are creating this world today, and we are the doers as the answer to those questions. Our aim is not only to bring a Nobel Prize for India, rather, it's to change the trend of research worldwide, because we don't want others to face the problems we faced. Thank you so much.